week's episode is brought to you by Audible. To browse their catalog of more than 150,000 titles and download the free audiobook of your choice, go to yhtv.us forward slash audible. Sign up or log in with your Amazon account and start enjoying your new book today. Hello and welcome to YHTV's Flowing into Awareness with visionary and master intuitive Anatara. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host for this program. This is episode 38. How does your contribution feel? Let us welcome Anatara. Oh, good afternoon, Hello. Christina. How are you? Hello, Anatara. Oh, let's see how we're contributing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> And we're always contributing something. Oh, always, <laughs> always. If 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 we could always be aware of that and conscious of that, mm-hmm. that no matter what we say and what we do is actually contributing to everything around us. Oh, it's that's it. That's it. Then that's yeah. and I'm we're going to look at that a little bit you know, in this session together. But I'm going to read the little what I've described this this um talk about just mm. because it i've used a, a couple play on words that i think are interesting so how does your contribution feel are you comfortable with what you are giving to your life stream do you feel that you are engaged in what really matters to you are you contributing to some of the projects you feel that destiny asks of you what are, what are you here to contribute this time what would you like us to ask of you. So I'm, I'm going to go through those briefly. <clears throat> what, are, what are you contributing to your life stream? What is your life stream? How does your life stream know, know what it is? How do you define your life stream? What is your life stream? <laughs> you know, is your life stream the, the way you flow through things every day? Is it about the the big choices and the small choices that you make all the time? Is it is it the the ups and downs, the coming and goings of of friends, of family, of of projects? What is your life stream? Is it just about being physical? Is it how the physical relates to all of the other parts of who you are? Life stream, life stream. To me, it's 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 all of those things that I mentioned. My life stream is 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 always um, pulling out of me or having me contribute whatever it is that, I'm, that I am capable of in that moment. So my life stream is integrally, hopefully, um, related to me, and it is of me. We are of one another. So if I have a life stream, what happens when my life stream interacts with your life stream? What happens when it intersects with the people at work? What happens when it intersects with people I might teach? Life stream. Consider what that means to you. Consider how you sit with the idea of what your life stream is and whether or not you have any input into how that is. Are you feeling like it happens without you? Are you feeling that that you can control it in some way or offer things to your life stream or choose things about it? These are all parts of the way we can understand our life, our life streams. Okay, so do you feel you are engaged in what really matters to you? So, so if there are things that you really like, uh, if there are things that you prefer over other things, have you chosen to be involved or engaged in some of those things as a part of your life stream, your life connectedness with everything else? You know, Christina said a few moments ago, we're always contributing something. We're always contributing to the all it is, that is, and we are always contributing to what becomes the the representation of our life streams. Um, so in, in that vein, are you contributing to the projects you feel that destiny has asked of you? So, so do you feel like you're in sync with, with, um, you could say karma, you could say destiny, you could say with whatever, it feels like you have come here to accomplish this time in this body, in this lifetime. So Are you contributing to the projects, to the things, to the elements of your life that feel um, 
aligned with what destiny is asking of you? And then, what are you here to contribute this time? Do you have any concept? Do you know what that might be? Do you feel that you've been able to look at that and then make choices that that give you an, oh, yeah, that feels right? Or do you still feel sometimes that the alignment isn't perfect and you're missing the boat or missing yourself? In other words, missing your own life stream. So here's the part I like the most. What would you like us to ask of you? So who is that us? Is the us um, a part of yourself? Is the us the universe in general? Is the us all of the people that know you? Is it the people that don't know you? <laughs> um, what would you like this vast us to ask of you? In other words, to draw out of you, to help you bring forth. And I find that when I pose this question to people, they start to see it in a slightly different way. Um, instead of feeling that sometimes we can't make decisions that about things that matter to us, we start to say, wow, if I could understand or define what I would like someone to require of me, or I would like my life to ask of me or to require of me, then maybe I can see it more clearly. Maybe that stuff will be, maybe I can really understand it. So take a moment and close your eyes for just a second and take a really, really deep breath in and out. And ask yourself if there's something that you would like the rest of us to be asking of you. What would you like us to ask of you? What would you like us to see in you, to appreciate in you, to know about you, so that we can then say, can you show us that? Can you show me what that is about you? Can you explain who you are? If I know what to ask of you, then maybe I can really get to know you too. You find yourself, you find a little bit more of an understanding about what your life stream really is about, and then I start to know, and I start to respond to the part of you that is inviting my query about you. As usual, these are a lot of words used to describe something that can be a lot simpler than that. But if you can look at what you want us to ask you, what you want us to emphasize when we see you or know you or, or come to play with you, if the question is right, if you can show us what you would like to share, then you can share it because we're open and being invitational to it. So you can see, Christina, how that how that the play happens there, how the, the sides merge together and and actually form a, a an, an overall invitation for each of us mm -hmm. to to present ourselves and then to ask to present all of ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm I, I'm attempting to put that into my body and and to, mm -hmm. to integrate that. And how's it going? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's, um, it's a very powerful state of being, Anatara. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Because so often we tend to avoid ourselves. Exactly. And it's not easy even just to look in the mirror to see who we are. Mm -hmm. And in this case, is pushing that level of consciousness to a whole nother level away from just the physical, but actually immersing oneself into oneself. Oh, that's, that's a great way to describe it. And that, that's why it's taking me a little while to <sighs> figure out, oh, my goodness. It's almost like, okay, this is going to take a little time. <laughs> <laughs> To, to sort of become conscious of, of what you've just shared. 
I, I have a way to simplify it, perhaps. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Have, we, we've all known times and, and had experiences where we meet a group of people and they just don't seem to get us. Uh, they don't understand us. They don't understand what we might be able to share or to show them. And, and they, don't, they, they don't seem to be paying attention to the things about which we feel are important. Mm. So the things about me that I think matter or that I would like to share with, with somebody else, they don't always know what that is. They can't find it. They can't see it. And sometimes it's because we, we are different kinds of people interested in different things, sharing different kinds of things. But I'm really noticing often, and I see this with kids too, I'm really o- noticing that often we don't know what to, to present to other people so that they can, in, in essence, invite us or ask us to be ourselves. Mm. And, and the, the inception point for that is knowing how to do that inside ourselves to begin with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's not the responsibility of the other person to know what to ask or to look for. But if, and when we know ourselves well enough, we can simply just present that. Mm-hmm. And we will all be seen and we will all be known in a far more um, substantial way. It won't be as superficial. The, sh- the tr- true sharing will happen. And it will, in a sense, ensure that this life that we're in really does feel like it's making a, a true contribution based on who we feel we are. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Yes, I mean it's it's uh, ah it is a, it is a moment. It is a moment to 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 reflect. It's a moment to um, be totally honest and in integrity of what we're connecting to. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's beautiful, Anatara. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to reemphasize one last little point, which is that. If we know what we want others to see in us, then we are also seeing our truth. And that's not the seeing that shows what color eyes we have or what color hair we have or what kind of clothing we're wearing. I'm talking about the true seeing of the, of the essence self, the essence of the soul. And when we see that and we are that, we invite others to see that as well. One drop is a thousand waves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one step at a time. Lovely, lovely. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Anatara. What a beautiful moment. <laughs> hmm. Let's see how we're contributing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we've shifted. It completely. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the, the mode of contribution may be the same, but maybe the intention or some of the energy behind it is different now. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or more clear. Yes, yes. Clarity. <laughs> oh, okay, so something for everyone out there to just be with. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Anatara. This is a a wonderful moment. Yes. And of course, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We're grateful for your continuous support and look forward to hearing your feedback on how we can serve you better. Uh, We invite you to connect with Anatara by following her on Twitter at Anatara and of course through her own website, anatara.ca. Now, um, I would uh, let you know that we would love it if you would subscribe to our show with weekly updates and just by visiting yogahub.tv for more details. We have many, many areas now that we're um, in. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, etc., and we would love for you to immerse yourself in all the wonderful uh, shows that we are coming up with and that we have. Thank you so much, and we look forward to your comments. Please give us a call at 818-LET'S-TALK. 818-LET'S-TALK. Until next time, namaste. Like
not having a high libido, mm -hmm. um, it's almost well. It's the manifestation of all this, all these stresses or stressors on us. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, work-life balance and career stress, stress in and of itself, is definitely an impact on. Uh, definitely impacts libido. Um, you know, adrenal fatigue will certainly impact libido. Um, not enough time. Um, not like literally no freedom in your life to really feel like you have the ability to indulge in that.